Hi. Hi. I am thrilled to be here today. The reason I'm here is to share with you the idea that helped me a lot to focus, to focus and do things that matter. Oh, you're probably wondering why is she holding this chessboard? I'll, give, I'll tell you in a second. But firstly, I want to share my idea with you. The idea is that you need to stop focusing on reasons why you cannot do things. Instead, you need to remember you can do things. You should do things. You can do them now. So why don't you get up and say, I can do it. I can do it now. Can you do it for me? Thank you. I can do it. I can do it now. Good. The reason I'm holding this chessboard is because I grew up as a professional chess player. So I was USSR chess champion twice and played in the same team with Gary Kasparov. So imagine me being age 11 and playing in a very important international chess tournament. And here's the game, the game before last game, and I'm leading. I'm excited. I'm playing the game. I have a winning game. I'm about to win, which meant a lot. At that time, I'm making a real bad move, and I lose the game. So here are my skinny, pale girl with braids in a short skirt, just losing an important game, and I'm walking through this large hall, and I run into the guy that I greatly respect, and he was an idol in chess, Vladimir Zak. He was a coach of two, world, two chess champions, world chess champions, Korshna and Spassky, and he really was supporting me all the time. So he looked at me, he said, so how did you do? Because he knew I was winning. I looked at him. Trust me, I couldn't say a word. I just bursted in tears and ran away. The next day, he approached me. And he told me the phrase that stuck with me through my whole life. He told me, Young lady, if you want to be a champion, you lose the game, you never cry. Instead, you analyze why you failed, learn from it, and move forward. So a couple of life lessons from this episode of my life. Number one, that you always have to remember the most difficult thing is to win the winning game. You have to stay focused. Only paranoid survive, said Andy Grove. Remember that. The second one is that there are some setbacks. They happened in chess. They happened in your real life. When those bad things, unfortunate things happen, the last thing you want to do is to cry. What you want to do is regroup, refocus, and move forward. There is another story that unfortunately or fortunately happened to me, and it's both, fortunately and unfortunately. A few years ago, I was in my home sitting on the couch, and I got a phone call. That was my doctor, and she just told me, you know what, we got your test results, you have cancer. 
that wakes you up. But you know, that one phone call just stopped my life. So I just couldn't breathe and I realized that could be it. And um, I shut the doors, I disconnected my phone and um, I started planning my funeral. And then my friends and family, they told me, just go and see a doctor and start doing things, you know, don't give up. And um, at that time, I realized that I was acting like I was dead, but I was still alive, pretty much so, right? So at that time, I started a company. Yes, there are people crazy like me. So at the time when I was diagnosed with cancer, before I had my surgery, I started a company. Why did I do that? Because the question that was bugging me was, why me? I lived healthy lifestyle, I ate good things, I never smoked, so why me? Why? Why me? And uh, I asked that question to my oncologist, and he said, I don't know. Bad luck. Bad luck. And I said, do you have like any hypotheses why did I get cancer? And he said, no, why not? Well, we don't have data. And I was like, and I was like, step back there, and I started thinking, what kind of data do we need to analyze to get into reasons why people get those horrible diseases, why some people live, some people die. So I outlined and mapped all kinds of data that can impact causation, treatment, outcome of chronic diseases, such as cancer. And those data are environmental data, it's stressor data, it's data from your electronic medical records, and so on, and part of that is data that come from me as a person that I realized are not captured anywhere. Now, you have to remember that it was all happening at the time when I was a cancer patient. So the last thing that I wanted to do is to look at people like me as a source of data. No. Those are people who are ill and they're really trying to get better. So instead of going to people and telling, I need your data, I need your data, I need your data, I decided to do it differently. So I started a company with my co-founder, Open Health Network. And what we decided to do is to build patient experience management platform where companies can create highly personalized very relevant mobile apps, chatbots, anything patient-facing, when they can provide everything those people need to manage their health along with data gathering. And all of that can be done without any programming, so very rapid, and those things can run on any device, in any language, integrate with AMR, wearable devices, and also collect data from people. So we launched this company at the White House Demo Day. Incredible experience. And then we were able to work with amazing healthcare companies such as American Heart Association, Health in human services, UCSF was beautiful and we realize now we have lots of good data that trapped within the apps and chatbots that have been developed on our platform. So what we decided to do, and we did, we released an offering which is patient sphere. And it's so unique because it enables you, people, to have full control of all your health data. Who, when, how, what can do with their data. And it's a revocable consent. So you 
can even get paid if companies use your data. So it's not just them using your data and making money, but you can decide if you're willing to, pay, to get paid to share certain data, and it's based on your consent, so you know. I think it's incredible because it basically enables dem democratization of health data. The offering was received so well, so I spoke at the United Nations, I spoke at South by South by Southwest, amazing, uh, you know, um, venues and people, we became profitable, funded. In all of that, I was able to do this, this there was an event that set me up and liberated me to actually do things that matter. So this, the lesson from this life story is that even in, you know, in, when you have incredibly difficult times, you still need to focus on things that matter and do them. Look at this. This is a chessboard. It has dark squares, light squares. Guess what? That's our life. We, we all have dark periods and light periods of, life, of our life. And every time we face difficulties, challenges, we have to remember there will be a light. You can do things, you should do things that matter. How many of you have dreams, ideas, things that you really care about. How many of you have those? How many of you actually doing them? Few hands. There were just, when you have those ideas, there are a lot of people who will tell you, you're crazy. And then you might say, you know what? <clears throat> right now it's not a good time. I have little children. I have parents I need to take care of. I'm in school, I don't have time, but I'll do it later. Well, guess what, people? Later might not be there. So you have to feel power to do things, to do things that matter and do them now. And I believe in you. I know each single of you who raised your hand telling me you have ideas, you have dreams, I want all of you to feel empowered to start doing those things. Don't wait like me to get waking up by cancer or some other event. Just start doing those things. So let's get up again. Repeat after me. I can do it. I'll do it now. Thank you.